Hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wasserman, and today we are looking at a third way to approach multi-digit multiplication. It's called lattice multiplication. We are in our math journals on pages 140 and 141, lesson 13 in unit 4. So first of all, what is lattice? Well, lattice as a building product looks something like this. It's a crisscross of boards that create a pattern, as you can see in this fence right here. So off to the side, I'm going to leave this picture of lattice. And as you can see, the lattice is made up of diagonals that crisscross like so. And that's going to be important because when we talk about multiplication over here, um, you're going to see some crisscrossing numbers, and that's what the lattice multiplication strategy is all about. Okay, but let's first look at this problem. It says solve using any method. Okay, three times sixty-four. Well, let's try that partial products way, shall we? So I'm going to write the problem vertically, up and down. 64 times 3, and of course, just because I reversed the number order does not mean that I am changing the outcome. So what is 64 times 3? Well, that's just 60 times 3 added to 4 times 3. Well, 60 times 3 gives me 180, where 6 tens times 3 gives me 18 tens. And of course, 4 times 3 is 12. And then when I add those two together, and since I wrote real big, I'm going to put my sum up here so I was not to get in the way of the second problem. It's going to give me a total of 192. Okay? Now, take a look at this model over here. We've got the same numbers, 64 and 3. But instead of including the zeros, we are just thinking about the digits, the whole digits that make up the place values, okay? So we still have 6 tens times 3 and 4 times 3. But again, um, when we calculate, we typically go from right to left. So if you look over here, if I multiply 4 times 3, it's going to give me a total of 12. 1 10 and 2 ones. And those digits are separated in these uh, diagonal columns, which make you think of a lattice that would be used in like a fence or a, a garden, a trellis, something like that. And then I'm going to take the digit 3, and I'm going to multiply it by 6. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 is 1, 10 and eight ones, okay? But the six in 64 stands for six tens. And what you can see here is that the eight in 18 is in the tens column, okay? That's what these diagonal lines represent. So everything over here in this section here, that's the ones. Everything in this section here, these are tens. Okay, and then the column next to it is hundreds. So the 1 in 18 is actually uh, 100 out of, uh, or 180, okay? So now what I do is I add the, t the columns together, but I'm going to do so diagonally. So as you can see underneath uh, the box right here, I bring down my 2 because 0 plus 2 is 2. And then I'm going to add 1 plus 8. That's going to give me 9. And then there's nothing to add in the 100, so I just bring down the 1. And that gives me a total answer of 192, which is the same thing I got over here. Okay? So it's a way of looking at uh, multiplication without having to break the problem down the way that we do in partial products. We're just doing the single digit addition and just keeping track of place values with this lattice formation. Let's take a look at this problem here right below it, number two. Three times five is 15. 
here's 5, here's 3, and here's the product, 15. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 5 times 1. 1 times 5 is 5. And then I'm going to multiply 5 again by 7. 7 times 5 is 35, right there. Now, when I then look at where these digits fall, okay, the 5 and 15 is in the 1's place value, but the 1 of 15 is in the 10's place value, which is in the same column, diagonal column, as the 5 from 1 times 5. Because what I'm really doing here is not multiplying 1 times 5, multiplying 10 times 5. So 10 times 5 gives me 50. This number right here, 5, represents 5 tens or 50. And then I add it to 110, that gives me 6 tens, right there. And the 7 on top of this box is not 7 ones, but 7 hundreds. That's where we get the number 715. It's built from 700 plus 10, or 110, plus 3 ones, 713, okay? So 7 times 5 is 35. 700 times 5 would give me 35 hundreds, or 3,500. So the 3 over here, that's in the thousands. The 5 over here, that's in the hundreds. So now what I have to do is I have to, to uh, uh, add all the, the numbers in each column. Bring down the 5 for 5 ones. 1 plus 5 gives me 6 tens. 0 plus 5 gives me 5 hundreds, and then I bring down the 3 for a grand total of 3,565. Okay? Now, if I were to break that down partitioning rectangle style, it would look very similar. 713 is 700 plus 110 plus 3 ones. And I would multiply each one of those numbers by 5. 700 times 5 is 3,500, or 35 with two zeros. 5 times 10 is 50, and 5 times 3 is 15. And again, once I have those products in my boxes, I have to bring them out of the box, and I gotta line them up, and I gotta add. So 3,500 plus 50 plus 15. This is going to give me a total of, oh, look at that. 3,565. So lattice multiplication just takes all the computations you would do in, say, partitioning rectangles or partial products and just lines up the digits within the place values. It does not incorporate the zeros, okay? You just have to remember there are zeros involved. So let's try one of these problems just lattice style. So 56 times 3. Now I would start, and actually I could start from either column, but I'm going to start from right to left. 6 times 3 is going to give me 18. 5 times 3 is going to give me 15. So now what I find myself with is 1 8, a 10, 5 more 10s, and 100. So I have to add. So I'm going to bring down the 8. I'm going to add 1 plus 5, that's going to give me 6 10s. I'm going to bring down the 1 in my hundreds, so that gives me a grand total of 168. Okay? Now let's do that a different strategy, another way. 56 times 3 would look like this in partial products. I would multiply 5 tens times 3. I would multiply 6 times 3. Five tens, of course, is going to give me 150, or 15 tens, and then six times three is 18, and if I add those two together, and you're seeing it already, I didn't even have to do the calculations. It's 168. Okay? Let's try one more. I'm going to skip down to number six, because number six, woo, look at that. I'm multiplying a two-digit number by a two-digit number. So there's a few more steps, but still the same number of steps you would take if you were using any other strategy. I'm going to multiply 3 times 4. That's going to give me 12. Put that in there. And then I'm going to multiply 3 
times 7 over there. 3 times 7 is 21. And then I'm going to multiply 4 times the 6. So here's the 4, here's the 6. 6 times 4 is going to give me 24. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the 6 by the 7. 6 times 7 is going to give me 42. Okay? So once I've done all those calculations, what I now need to do is add up my columns. And now I just have more digits in each diagonal column. So I'm going to bring down the 1. I'm going to add 2 tens plus two tens, plus two more tens, it's going to give me a total of six tens. One plus four plus four is going to give me nine. And then I just bring down the two, which gives me a total of 2,961. Now again, if I were to approach that problem partition rectangle style, I would have to create a rectangle with four boxes, and I would break it down, 63, let's do 60, plus 3 on the top, and 40, and 7 on the side, and then I would just multiply each of the, the numbers. 60 times 40 is going to give me 2,400, or 24 with two zeros behind it. 40 times 3 is going to give me 120, or 12 with a zero. 60 times 7 is going to give me 420, or 42 tens, and 7 times 3 is 21. And again, if you look at this uh, lattice breakdown, you see the 24 and 2400? That's the same 24 over here. The 12 and 120, that's the same 12 that's over here. Here's the 42, and then here's the 21. So it's all there. So now I would just add up all those partial products, 2,400, 120, 420, and 21. And of course, when I do that, I get my answer, 2,961. So lattice multiplication is just a third way of approaching the problem, again. When you have multiple tools in your mental toolbox, that means you have options. Some of you are more visual learners, and you need to see those zeros. Some of you can start to uh, take advantage of the concepts of place value, and you can kind of skip that step mentally and just look at the digits involved. As long as you remember where those digits live and what place value that represents, you can do the calculations add together the digits without including the zeros, and still come up with the same answer. That's just another way of approaching it. So, you now have three different methods for multiplying large digit numbers. And any one of those methods will uh, serve you well. It's good, though, to learn all three methods, and you can kind of uh, pick and choose and work in between, because some problems lend themselves better to partial products, some problems lend themselves better to partitioning rectangles, and then some problems lend themselves better to lattice. You'll figure that out along your journey. And with that, my friends, you have now reached the halfway point in your fourth grade career in math. Uh, this was the last lesson in Unit 4. Uh, unit 5 will... Uh, begin in the second semester, which means uh, at that point you'll be closer to being a fifth grader than you were being a third grader. And as we look towards the future, it doesn't hurt for you to first take a moment to look around. And if you uh, look around uh, this strategy and think, wow, this is tough, I don't understand this, now would be a good time for you to talk to your math teacher. They are here to help you and to help you sort through all the different strategies and the concepts and the lessons that you've learned so far this semester. You know, they are willing and able to help you only if they know you have a question. So ask. And with that, friends, I wish you good luck on this assignment. And uh, when we uh, talk again, it'll probably be in the second semester 
and hopefully after a uh, relaxing and fun winter break. So until then, uh, have a good day. Thanks.